So hi, hello and welcome, Micropunter here. So what I'm going to do in this video is, is I'm going to talk about uh, my microscopy tools and accessories that I use and I'm going to specifically talk about the field box uh, that I've made. Uh, so basically into this field box I put all of the things, all of the accessories and tools um, that I take out into nature when I do a sampling for uh, collecting specimens for microscopy. Well, basically I put out all of my tools here and I'm going to go now through them and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I use them. Um, so basically, I'm, I think I'm just going to start with the biggest one here. I'm just going to move it out of the way then. And this is actually used uh, uh, for soldering, so for holding electronic components together um, so that you can solder them together. But I'm using it uh, to hold um, a little magnifying glass, um, so especially... up oh, now it went off. Uh, so basically, um, when I want to dissect or take apart very small specimens, insects and so on. This is uh, qu quite useful. I'm not using it so often, uh, but it's uh, good to have it around. So I'm going to get it out of the way. Um, and now here are the main tools that I use. Let me move the camera over a little bit. The most uh, important tool, or at least the one that I use most often, is this: uh, um, are these tweezers here, the, the pointed tweezers. Um, and they are really multi-purpose because what they can be also used for is not only to pick up objects, but also to put a little bit of a water drop. Um, uh, I can basically pick up some water this way and I can transfer them on the microscope slide. And so this also kind of replaces uh, those uh, uh, pipettes uh, here. Um, and it also allows me to actually position the, the cover glass on the microscope slide and, and do all of these things. So the, um, I would say if there's anything that you want to buy, um, when uh, any microscopy accessory that you want to buy, uh, I would say this one has a high priority here. Um, then those scissors here, uh, those dissecting scissors are probably the second most uh, commonly used uh, tool that I have. Um, yeah, um, all of the odd things, uh, um, cutting apart uh, small specimens, uh, um, even when collecting algae, they're very fibrous uh, and long, so I can actually um, cut through them as well. Um, yeah, so that is also very, very useful. Um, those um, uh, tweezers I kind of use less often, um, maybe for positioning the cover glass um, um, on the uh, on the slide, uh, but for that I could also theoretically use this one here. I'm not using them so often, but um, actually they're also occasionally useful. I would not get both of them. Um, one of those two would be enough. There is actually no point really for it uh, to be, um, yeah, in, at a 45 degree angle here. I use them basically for the same purposes. Um, a larger scissor here um, is also available, um, also not used so often uh, because uh, if I need, uh, I can use theoretically if I needed uh, to cut uh, maybe um, across the stem of certain plants or so, then of course those smaller scissors are not quite uh, as, as strong, so then I use this one here, um, but uh, also not so commonly used. And rarely used, uh, mostly when I um, do a little bit of dissection work, um, are those uh, very sharp uh, yeah, surgery knives here, scalpels. Um, I uh, keep them wrapped in paper so that I don't accidentally hurt myself. Of course, um, some cover glasses. Uh, that's kind of uh, obvious. Uh, these are a little bit larger that I have here. I've got some smaller ones here as well. Okay. Um, I occasionally also use uh, this uh, magnifying glass here when I'm in nature simply to check uh, certain specimens where there's actually something there uh, worth collecting. I sometimes do a very quick check using this 10 times magnifying yeah, lens. Um, the pipette I already showed you, um, this is very useful for actually uh, catching uh, water fleas and all sm uh, other small water crustaceans uh, because, yeah, they're quite fast. So what I usually do, I have to go into the, the, the beaker and, uh, and then I quickly try to suck it up and uh, the opening here is uh, generally large enough uh, yeah, to be actually pick up uh, the water fleas. Um, if uh, you do not want to use uh, the rubber bulb here, what you can also do is you simply take it off, uh, you hold it uh, here, you insert it into the sample and then you quickly release it and then the water rushes in and is also able to pick up certain, yeah, certain specimens. Um, this here is a uh, container, uh, glass container dish 
Uh, and uh, it, I use this uh, for two reasons, of course, um, uh, to carry some water when I make uh, my slides, or also um, sometimes I transfer the water fleas into this uh, dish here, and then it's much easier for me to take them out and transfer them over um, to uh, yeah to to microscope slide. Um, so um, sometimes uh, they can all, I also use them for staining. So I put some stains uh, in here and then I transfer using the tweezers. I, I transfer the usually plant material into the stain and then out again and so on. Um, yeah, quite useful, not absolutely necessary. You can also use some other, yeah, uh, kitchen, <laughs> uh, kitchen utensils here, but uh, it works. Um, a, a brush uh, to clean, um, yeah, to clean some stuff off. Um, and uh, what I have is, is where do I keep all of these things? I have to move over now. I'm just going to move this here over like this. I do have a little uh, toolbox um, here, which I bought uh, um, uh, ridiculously cheap, actually. It, I only paid two euros. I think that's around three US dollars for, uh, for this box. Also a little in an insert here. It's actually used for tools, but I'm using this, uh, of course, uh, for um, microscopy. So what I'm going, what I usually do is, is I put uh, some tools in here to take along. Um, I close it up here and in here I have uh, a whole bunch of uh, uh, specimen containers and unfortunately this uh, yeah, jar is too large so I cannot at the same time put the, the this plastic top in here um, but uh, I sometimes I just leave this at home uh, because I put the tools into the lid here um, and I just leave it at home and I just uh, keep the tools that I don't take along, I usually keep them in here. Um, yeah, so that is basically for collecting uh, water samples, but what I consider really useful are those uh, plastic containers. Um, basically, I got them from a local drugstore because they uh, use them to actually make creams um, and then they fill it up in here and then you can basically buy it. Um, and they were ridiculously cheap actually, really, they were really cheap uh, um, and they're reusable and they're watertight. That's really an advantage. Um, there are different uh, volumes here. That's a 50 milliliter, for example, no, 60 milliliter. Okay. Um, and uh, this one here is has, uh, yeah, 25 uh, milliliters. I don't know why they actually wrote 25 here and then here they wrote 20, I don't know. And, and what I sometimes do is, is I simply label, um, I label uh, them and uh, I keep my, so that's for example, it's a sand a sample, yeah, that I have. Um, and uh, yeah, then it's a permanent marker and then I can use simply some alcohol to to, to remove it again. Um, yeah, so you, ha and what's this here, pollen. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's spruce pollen that I collected some time ago. Yeah, so they are quite uh, quite useful. Um, if you don't have these over eBay, you can also buy those old plastic film canisters. Um, usually, they are also quite uh, quite low cost, um, and uh, they are also watertight. And before I actually switched over to these here, I used those film canisters. I don't even remember what's in here. Ah, yeah, yeah, some fish scales and some plant material. I <laughs> mixed them. <laughs> okay, um, and. Uh, also very useful for smaller water samples are those small glass jars, um, especially for algae. They allow light to go through and therefore, yeah, um, I use them also for water samples. And then what I sometimes do is, is I simply um, put the jar as it is here <laughs> on my windowsill <laughs> and uh, then they get enough light. Because uh, before I had this larger box here, I used uh, another small plastic box here. This one is actually also from a hardware store where they have, uh, where they sell these for screws. Okay, so there you can actually have little plastic uh, separators in here. And uh, basically it's like this, that when I go out sampling and I do not want to take along the, the large box here, I when I don't want to take along, I, I take this small container along and I put some foam material in here so that the containers are basically uh, held in place. Um, and uh, yeah, um, basically it's like this, that uh, the tools they go in here and uh, I also put some foam material in here so that it doesn't make too much sound um, and what I usually do is, is I put it into a little bag fits in here and I simply take it along um, the reason being that uh, yeah it looks not very um, yeah conspicuous so to say and uh, and uh, people don't uh, ask uh, what in the world am I carrying along when I carry along a larger uh, box like this um, but this one is quite uh, quite useful and in case I find something interesting I simply uh, take the sample put it into the box and and take it back uh, back home into yeah to look at it. Yeah, so basically that's uh, pretty much um, all I wanted to, to show you. Um, yeah, and uh, 
that's pretty much it. I wish you a nice day. Happy microbe hunting as always. If you have any comments or if you have different uh, views or opinions on how best put to put together a field box, uh, please uh, write a comment. I think it's going to be interesting uh, to see um, how different uh, amateur and hobby microscopists, how they actually, uh, yeah, uh, what different uh, tools they use. So I wish you a nice day. All the best. Bye bye.